Welcome to a new episode of Advancing Consciousness series with Franco Di Nicola. This is a place where people can come to gain further insight and clarity as to what is going on and how we can shift things on a personal and global level, while also accessing higher levels of consciousness and awareness. We bring this series to you free of charge so that many are able to access this information. However, if you resonate with what Franco shares and you would like to support his work to get more content out, contributions are welcomed and greatly appreciated. A link is in the description and will be provided in the chat if you feel guided to do so. Also, we have many previous workshops, such as the most recent, Bringing Out the New You to Play in the New World, along with our membership program, Let's Talk About You where like-minded people come together bi-weekly to talk about the topics requiring deeper understanding and clarity. All of these are available on Teachable and we encourage you to check them out as they are great resources at very affordable prices to assist in better understanding this human experience. The Teachable link will also be provided in the chat and is also in the description. And lastly, don't forget to share, share, share. As more of us come together who are creating shifts in themselves, the more effective it will be to shift things globally. Thank you for joining us and being part of the change. Enjoy today's broadcast. Let me know when. Okay. Welcome, everybody. We get to uh, come together again and to play. And today, of course, is part five of episode 17 Uh, which we basically call it's time to get real and I know we've had quite a few parts in this one because it's a huge one and and coming to real what does that actually mean for us it's really basically becoming real with ourselves that we are in fact the navigator guidance designer the creator aspect of every aspect of everything that we're playing out right now so It's really the fact that that we've played what looks like and has been an unreal game for the longest time. And what does that also indicate? It indicates that we kind of let the world and everything else that's playing out and everything that's been handed down along the way to kind of shape and govern the way we experience life. And the beauty of that is that we're okay with having that experience and to be really taken through that ride. Now, when I say taken, is that you, you engage with it, you adopt the ride and you go for the ride. However, if, with any ride, it comes to a point, it's not that so much it's at an end, it's like now to, to really redesign, reshape, redirect, or just go on a different ride a ride that we are not just adopting, we're basically actively involved in our shaping and creating. Because a lot of people talk about the new world and embracing the new world or, you know, bringing forth the new world. Well, the new world, the platform already exists. The platform has been there for a while. It has created two really distinct platforms that work very close to each other. However, for us to actually utilize those platforms, for us to be able to um, engage in it and go to this next level that we have chosen collectively to do so, we, we are the ones that actually have to ship that. So the first thing I wanna talk about, so the question I'm gonna ask, if you are ready, if you are ready for change, for a new design, for a new way to experience the human life from anything that you've experienced before. And really utilizing the you that's coming in, the most powerful part of you, and really go into that creative and play in this new world, then do we still wait for things around us to change before we take action or before we say, okay, now it's changing? I mean, we could look at it and say, look, the world is changing. Absolutely. Why has it been changing? It's been changing because we are collectively changing. We are stimulating so powerfully that capacity that, that 
really putting that into place for us to change. So the question is, if you are ready, are you going to wait? Are you going to continue to wait for things to change around you? Or are you going to take action? Because the new world starts with you. The new world is your creation. Your new world is not only your creation and the different levels of co-creation, but it's a complete co-creation. Because again, like I said, it starts with us, then it goes into the next level with, within your uh, proximity of your reality, and then it expands further and further throughout the whole playground we call planet Earth, playing through with more of Gaia's opportunities and, and um, support that it provides us. But then we, we actually go into the levels of galactic and we're going, or what we call solar system, the galactic, and then the universal aspect of it. So the first part starts always with us. So the thing is, if you want to really change, it's for us to start taking action. And how does that action look like? What is that action? Really, I'm going to be playing with more of what is going on with that through this episode in part five. And we're going to look at the things because they're all tied in together. But the, f the first part is, okay, I'm going to look at my life. And right now we've given ourselves in a way a disrupt of our patterns. We've given us the opportunity to take a breather in many, many ways. And it doesn't matter if you're still working and still, you know, react. It, the environment you're playing with is very different. Okay. Regardless what role you're taking on, because everything around you that was the consistency is not there. That means you're not supported. You're not getting in your car or wherever you're doing and seeing everything the same. That disrupt still exists. And it doesn't matter if you're working in the hospital, even that's different. How people are reacting, responding, what roles and what, um, what uh, modalities and whatever else is going on, whatever uh, that is taking place. All of it has created a disrupt. And of course, emotional uh, emotion charges like fear, and insecurity and doubting the future and, and feeling a loss of all of that is still also very prevalent in playing in our journey. So we're not outside of that. We're experiencing all of that right now for the very reason to have those shifts occur within ourselves. And this is the thing. So really we're being handed out which we are doing. It's not outside of us. We've agreed. And everybody's at different stages. So some people are just kind of, you know, shaking their world, looking at different things that's going on that has no more consistency, okay, of what they were accustomed to those patterns or whatever else was going on. Others are just playing in a different playground. So it's nurturing certain changes within them. The energies that are coming in are affecting people at different levels. Others have started to so-called become more aware of the game and starting to become aware that the game may not match with your reality that wants to come through you. Okay. Because there's two types of reality. There is the ego mind reality that says everything is fine or whatever it is. But at the same time, we got to be afraid. We got to still play the old 2D inverted 3D inverted matrix component. And the other part is, is the, the genuine true aspect of yourself that's coming through and saying, Hey, let's go play with this. That's, that's really now bring that into alignment. So, that part of you is, is coming more. And even the child that you may have had within yourself, that playful, imaginative, creative part of you, really now wants to be part of this journey. It no longer wants to be in the closet, no longer wants to be hiding, no longer needs to be discounted, no longer wants to be in one way or another, uh, something that we have a belief that that was just a phase of our life because that was the closer version of our reality of who we are when we started off. And then we put all of that off. Now it's coming in more fully, but there's a maturity that occurs with that child too. The maturity of a deeper realization and much more enriched with the experiences that we're having right now. So it's not outside of it. It's very inclusive in it. So it comes back. Are you ready for the change? And are you ready to take action? Because 
as long as we wait for the world to change around us, which it is, but for that, for example, if we are now looking at, oh, before I can be myself, before I can actually do what I really feel so compelled to do, I need to take care of all these things or I have, the world has to shape so that it gives me the freedom. It doesn't work that way. The, there is levels of freedom coming in, but the thing is, you start to live the freedom within yourself. So this is really instrumental for you to take time to, we can call it meditation, quiet time, and start looking at your life. Start looking at how do I truly, without allowing any of the dialogue, which your ego will come out and say, no, not interested. How do I really want to shape and what is important, truly, truly, truly important in my life? Because, this, you know, I, I know I've said this, some of this stuff right now that I'm saying uh, in previous episodes and previous parts, but it's so instrumental, so key that, you know, it, it's worth reminding over and over again. Because if we look at it and say, okay, what, without any obstacles, how do I want to live my life? How do I shape it? Not from what we've been conditioned to, to uh, expose ourselves to uh, as an idea, but what truly feels genuine within you. Now, if the, the critic comes up and says, oh, that's not possible, not the way it is right now, or you got to take care of all of this stuff, put that aside. Thank you, but we're not looking at that. Create the mapping. Write it down, what that looks like. Put your attention in what that looks like. And of course, it's going to upgrade and change along the way to match where you're, the stages you're going through because your imagination will and creativity will uh, continue to expand. The energy of the planet and others playing in your, in your realm of playground will expand too. So you, you're, you're tuning in or tuning up or, or, or modifying and upgrading whatever there. But when you're looking at it, say, okay, how do I see the world? How do I experience? How do I choose to experience it from this moment without all the other stuff? And then by paying attention to it and see yourself doing exactly that in your mind, see it. You close your eyes and you envision. And if any critic uh, ego comes in and, and says, well, that's not possible, whatever it is, no, thank you. I'm going to use my imagination. I'm going to use my creative, imaginative state to see yourself in those experiences. So seeing yourself doing what feels the most natural for you, not what you think you have to do, not what you've been programmed to think what you want to do. It's really that natural part that is coming through you. That's the part that you connect with. And that's the part that feels the most genuine for you. So you see yourself imagining living that life. But don't stop just there. See how your relationships and connections with others are. See how you interact with other groups and, and um, communities as you go on. But then also see the next level. Now, do these in stages because you have to get comfortable with each one. This is why I'm providing this for you. Uh, because you already know this. I'm just stimulating it within yourself. Then look at how you see the world. Because... I've said it before, what we've been playing this game right now up to this point in time was never your true human experience. We wanted to experience something out of that true human experience to have whatever experience we're having now. But the thing is, you want to bring that true human experience in. So looking at whatever is being played out, you, you now realize that that was never your true human experience, but you've agreed, adopted the idea for a period of time just so that you can get your feet wet, as like they call it, your grounding in the game, so that now you can step forward and say, okay, now we upgrade the whole experience. We go in, in, into that. And the other thing is, too, when you're seeing the world, bring that true essence of yourself in the world as a reflection. So you're going to experience yourself seeing the world that does not have polarities, rights and wrongs and goods and bad, light and dark and all of that stuff. 
and also the survival, also the fear, the, the disempowerment, the victimization and, uh, and all of those things. You're not going to see that because in our true nature, many of us <clears throat> in our life have looked at our lives and looked at it and said, you know, something doesn't resonate with this because this does not feel natural. But then we, the mind will turn around, the ego mind part of it is not really the mind, the ego mind part of it says, no, that's how the game is. This is what you came for and this is what you're doing here and whatever else. But that other part of you doesn't see struggle or not even live in your life. How many of us actually truly, truly live our lives? You know, because we keep putting our lives off because of responsibility, because we need to play a particular role, because we need to earn it. That means that we have to go and do all these things that we do not like, do not support, do not resonate, does not resonate within ourselves until you've, you know, put in the time, put in the effort before you can live your life. But by that time, are you still ready to live your life? How much of it has changed? And are you at that point in time ready to truly live your life or are you living a life that is another program, another belief system or anything of that nature? So to keep in mind, very first part, whatever you expose yourself to has a tendency to shape our beliefs. Let me say that. Whatever you expose yourself to as input has a tendency to shape your beliefs. And I'm going to explain the thing about beliefs shortly. But the beliefs are basically what you're seeing and you're taking in and say, okay, I believe this is how it needs to be. Okay? Now what happens? As you adopt these beliefs, you are now shaping your reality and in most cases, taking that reality that you've shaped and start to experience what very much for is limits of how the game is played. Because I want to bring out one more point that I've mentioned before, but I'm going to mention it again. The game of life that we are experiencing is all made up. It's not factual. It is not rigid. We are playing the game that's made up. So when we look at our world and look at the systems and we look at how it functions, those rules, those belief systems, those ideas, those traditions and whatever we keep passing on from generation to generation is still a continuation of what has been made up. Because if you see it for what it is, that it's made up, guess what? It becomes easier for us to shift it. So, the point is, the more we expose ourselves, not only our belief shapes, we start to plug that in in our reality and we make that our experience. So if we believe the idea that we need to do all of this before we can live our life, before we can actually do any part of our life, then that continues to, sh to shift it, um, continues to shape it for us, and then it doesn't allow us to go into that until you get to the point of saturation. So this is the thing. So if you're noticing that what you're being exposed to, say the media, the movie, the music, all of that stuff, is reinforcing, which it does, reinforces that old world, reinforces that polarity and whatever our part that was very 2D, inverted 3D, and I say inverted 3D because it's not the natural 3D, an inverted matrix, then you may want to cut back the exposure to it, if not completely cancel it or stop, and start using more of your imagination to experience that within yourself so your reality starts to reshape. Okay? Now, the reshaping is basically reshaping in alignment with yourself, the deeper parts of yourself, the consciousness of the body, the consciousness of the human entity, and the consciousness of your soul 
and the consciousness of the levels of, say, soul family or monad, whatever you want to call it, different parts of it bringing in to uh, our reality. Because as much as you've come here to play the game under those old um, rules and belief systems, you really never came here to hold on to it. So the other thing is to, it doesn't stop just on what you're watching, also the engagement that you may have with others. For example, if somebody's projecting ideas of fear, limitation, or this is, this is gonna get you, or whatever it is, pay attention to it. Be observant and see how that makes you feel. Is it in resonance or is it in some way or another a dissonance you will notice that if you get even in a conversation with someone, and I, and I know there's this whole uh, distancing, uh, distancing part of it, but we're still communicating online, we're still communicating on phones, we're still communicating in different ways, or whenever, you know, within our family dynamics or wherever the household that you're in, that you're sharing, what you're looking at that, the conversations that you have, pay attention to them. Is it truly in alignment? Does it alter your frequency? So for example, you could be at a certain level of frequency right here, okay? You can be, for the most part, right here. You're at this higher frequency. Higher frequency that acts more within your soul alignment, okay? And this one is more of what you call the inverted 3D. Let's, uh, let's fix this up. Let's do the inverted matrix thing first. Inverted matrix. What we call 2D and inverted 3D and all that. Okay. So you get into a conversation with someone and here you are in this conversation and you can feel that the conversation, if you're supporting their lower state that may be fear-ridden or uh, the idea that somehow, you know, it's the end of the world or that, uh, you know, things are going to be bad or whatever it is or there's this boogeyman and the boogeyman is this horrible virus or horrible whatever, right? It doesn't matter. It, doesn't, it can be anything. And if you're getting into that conversation and you're noticing that you're slipping down here, you're slipping into that range. So once you're in this range right here, you're now more into that and you're reinforcing the old stories, programs, belief systems that were all created in the inverted matrix 2D, inverted 3D part of it. Your old stories that were created in the past and also the emotional charges of the fear or anything else that may come up for you. Okay, so it's it's, inst it's very instrumental and key to pay attention. So it's not about being afraid to have the communication. It's about paying attention and not to feed, not to feed the conversation. Now, you're not gonna say, when somebody says, well, what do you think about what's going on? You know, uh, we just heard that such and such said this and that, you know, the numbers are climbing, whatever it is with all of this stuff going on or that, you know, the economy is shot now and we're gonna, we're never gonna recover. There's gonna be so much bankruptcy, whatever the story may be, or the fact that they feel, oh, my, the neighbor uh, just got sick. We just heard some other people that are close family did this and this and this and happened to them and whatever else. And you're slipping in there then you, you, you basically at that point say, yes, I understand what's going on around and what the focus people are doing and what the focus they are putting into. However, I'm also noticing that there's more to that. Okay. And I'm not here to say what's right or wrong, but to me in, in resonance to myself, that's not where I'm going to put my focus. I, I'm choosing to see the world in a very different way. And if somebody says, well, you're trying to see it through rose colored glasses, it's not about that because you're not filtering it. You're seeing it as the game. You're seeing it as the collective projection, but you're now not using that as your main reference point. You're now referring from a higher aspect. So whenever you're into that, so you, you, you stay in this by observing because when you are at this frequency, in, in that state of consciousness, your higher frequency, let's call it frequency, oops, 
higher frequency, higher self. Uh, that's higher self soul. Let's let's call it that. When you're in that state, your the emotional charges are not really easily activated. You're you're not limited to potentiality. You're not limited to experience and create. Here it limits. It all goes into the small confine, which are old stuff that's passed on. And it doesn't matter what anybody shares and anything that reinforces any part of it. We, we are here in a situation where you have the freedom. Because when you are focused from that higher consciousness, you can now be an observer and not be affected, but be effective. Not affected, but effective in creating changes. So whenever you're having that dialogue, I can give you my example when I'm talking to anybody at any point in time, doesn't matter if it's online or whatever, and they go into that, I, know, I don't feed it. I go, I can understand what you're seeing. However, this is what I'm seeing. This is what my observation is. I've done more research or whatever it is. I also see that we have the freedom to really design things much more because I'm not going to go here. Not that I'm you know, afraid of this. This is not the old game I want to play. We're here and we're, we're going to provide this. And this is what you do. You not only provide it for yourself, you provide it for others without an expectation that they need to change. No expectation that you need to be effective. Because no matter what, the moment that you are effective to yourself, you're being effective in making already changes. Whatever you share with that openness for anybody, they receive it. Even if they seem on the surface that they're not open, you're already planted the seed. So there's two types of seeds you can plant. The seed of the, ma the fact that you're making changes within yourself and accessing higher realization already plants a seed with everybody because we're all interconnected. But the next seed is the communication part. So as you're sharing these higher wisdoms and so forth, you're also very powerfully creating and planting a seed in them, which they may not activate right away. And it may stay um, uh, dormant or what looks like it's dormant, but it isn't because it's already starting to shift. The moment the seed is planted, it starts to shift. It may not be responsive and visible right away. Because look at how many of us have started to become more aware, more conscious, more awake, as they call it, or woke, whatever, more awake. So what's happening is many seeds have been planted along the way. And many times there are people, and I've connected with so many, that no matter what I had shared or others have shared and so forth, it was never being um, stimul stimulating or creating a change within themselves at those times. But over time, because now the thing is, the seed is planted. And we're getting all of this other stuff that's coming in, which is actually what it's doing. It's destabilizing the, 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 the so-called shield that we've created or the field that we've created. But then energetically, it's like nutrients going into the seed. Okay? It's like water and nutrients stimulating the seed. So the seed starts to grow within anyways. And it creates that level of awareness because even if you looked at the control structures they realize that the service that they have provided in the world of more massive polarity is no longer being supported and and they're just playing out the rest of the piece of the role just so that we can have those polarities to allow those new seeds to come forth at this time so in our communication, in our exposure, and also pay attention to your reaction. Your reaction, your thought forms, what the ego keeps telling you, this is right, this is wrong, this is good, you gotta feel bad, you gotta feel that the, this is, you know, uh, ending or whatever it is. And that's the other part of resources. So it's not only the media and external components, the engagement with family, friends, groups, or whatever it is, 
But the next level of engagement, which is the key engagement, is also with you. And that is the part with you that's the ego component that's still very much because ego works really, really well in here. It has the most amount of access. Now, it doesn't mean the ego doesn't try here because it does, but it doesn't have the same impact because its intention is to bring you down here. Because then you're on my turf. This is not my turf. This is my turf. My turf is this, of this band of frequency. My turf is inverted matrix. My turf is 2D inverted 3D. That's where I flourish. That's where I have the most amount of power. That's how I can keep you on track. And see, these are the things you need to look at. So here you have limits and you're disempowered, okay? The most. Doesn't mean 100%, depending on what state you're in. That's where you can experience the most level of disempowerment is in here. This is where you can experience victim state. Here. And victim state does not stop with the fact that somebody has power over you. You can become a victim to the playground very easily. We do that all the time. We're, we can be victims by following rules, by feeling in some way I need to adopt what anybody else tells me to do, family, culture, or anything of that nature. And when I say victim, meaning that I surrender my knowing and adopt someone else's knowing, or a group's knowing, or some fictional projection of deity knowing, or anything of that nature. So you're still in a disempowered state and you're in a victim state. Meaning I have no control. I'm in the mercy of whatever. A mercy of the group. Mercy of humanity. Mercy of these rulers or playing a role. I'm a mercy to some deity uh, out there or up there or something of that nature and you know it's God's will or this will or that will or whatever it is. It's your will because you are already God or whatever, but this level here, you don't, you can't acknowledge it. It's very hard to do so because you're not connected to yourself. You can have bits and pieces. Now, you can go up and down, absolutely, and eventually you keep going. You spend, your new home resonance or your new home frequency is in this range where you're basically your higher self expressing itself in physical form. Okay? So, the thing is, I also wanted to talk about belief. Belief and knowing. So, what's the difference? A lot of people say, I believe this to be true. And then there is, I know this to be true. Now, of course. Belief is something you adopt. It's a belief, it's something you adopt that's been handed down. Now, you can have a belief which eventually becomes a knowing if it's true to your understanding and knowing and so forth. Because right now, what are we stimulating? We're, we're, yes. We're stimulating our true knowing within ourselves. We're not, we're not stimulating beliefs. We're taking certain beliefs that align and it becomes knowing. So somebody says, I believe this, or I believe that there's some ruler, or I believe that I'm disempowered, or I believe that I have no say in the matter. Those are just belief. When it comes to knowing, your knowing's not gonna say, I'm disempowered. When you're tapping true, true knowing, when you're talking about higher, higher, um, higher self and soul, or even the, the highest aspect of your human entity, or even body consciousness, it does not say, I am subject to all of this. From that state, it's a knowing that there is a, an ultimate creator essence within myself, and I have the power to shape it, design it, and to contribute through this. So, 
belief is adopted and learned. This is what happens. The belief is shaped by what we experience and see in the external world. What others tell us. It doesn't matter if it's education, it's not a ma- it doesn't matter if it's parents, it doesn't matter if it's anybody in your life or what the media, because the media, all the different sources coming in are stimulating belief and they're shaping the belief. So they're creating ideas. This is life. This is how it's played, even though it does not match within you, even though saying, I don't know, these things here, you know, they don't really, really resonate. But, you know, I've been told over and over again, that's the way the game is. And that's how I'm going to adopt it. So that's what you're doing. You're adopting it. But anything you adopt, you can unadopt. You can plug it out. You can remove it. The knowing, it just continues to grow. That knowing is coming from an essence source of what you've come here to play with or do or the true essence of yourself. Because the physicality, it's going to say the true essence of a physicality, which is made up of 12 different genetic encodements or DNAs or what we call um, inputs. We are part of Gaia, which is a a high vibration uh, aspect of ourselves. The same thing with the human entity, with all of those experiences, growing, sharing, whatever else, and your soul. So you're bringing all of that into it. That's all here. But adopting really belongs here. It's not there. So we're adopting ideas, concepts, belief systems, perceptions, and all of that. So everything around us is tapping into the opportunity to condition you, to train you, to establish beliefs, to establish a guideline of how to play the game. But everything that is doing that is all 2D, inverted 3D, and inverted matrix. And we're not there anymore. We're not choosing to support that anymore. So we got to shift the belief. So you question the belief. So you look at it, well, I believe this is this. How does that resonate for me, the belief? Does it actually match? Does it feel in resonance? Does it feel natural to me? Does it feel in some way it is who I am? Is it really what I'm here to express? Does it feel genuine to me? Because a lot of times we take the genuine part of us and say, no, you know, as much as I, I feel this within myself, but look, everybody's reflecting this new this belief or whatever that belief is. So you adopt the belief, thinking that that's how the game needs to be played. And I've, like I've said many, many, many times, you can do so. There is no restriction to do so, and we all have done it. However, we're getting to the point where we're no longer choosing to support those adopted beliefs. So what happens is the beliefs start to collapse, starts to shatter within ourselves. It tends to create another level of access of knowing by collapsing those things. Because the more... You're, high, you're in this range, and the, the higher self, higher frequency, soul is playing out within you. Those beliefs don't have the same power, don't have the same rigidity, doesn't have the same consistency, does not have a backing. But the ego mind, write this in, the ego mind says, oh, we have... Lots to back it up. Look at the world. Everybody's reflecting this. Look at it this way. You can sit down and watch a movie. Especially these days. Okay? There's ideas of how love is. There's ideas of how romance is. There's ideas how people communicate with each other. There's ideas of how we can't trust anybody. There's ideas that we are violent. There's ideas that there's a right and wrong and good and bad. There's ideas that you have to follow a certain protocol because you don't have freedom. 
There's ideas that you have to do all of this before you have an opportunity to have freedom. There's ideas that you're never going to be fully integrated because you're going to have health issues, you're going to have this issue, you're going to have that issue, or that the fact that you have to adopt to what the family dynamics or whatever it is. Those ideas are just continuing supporting just beliefs that are just handed down from all of this. That's all. So what you're doing is shifting from that, you're breaking down this as more as your knowing is coming through. So, beliefs are adopted and inconsistent. This is the other one thing I want to share with you. Beliefs are not rock solid. Beliefs continually need reinforcing and confirmation. It always has to look outside, it always has to look at something to sustain, sustain it. I need further proof, and that's what the media does. And I'm talking about everything. What education does, what we do to each other by communicating with each other. We're reinforcing each other to support the belief that we've adopted. For example, Religion, just as an example, for us to buy into it, we have to continually be exposed to whatever is being taught, shared, and so forth, because it's only a belief. And in some cases, they call it, you have to have faith, which I'm going to talk about. But the belief, faith is saying, I have faith in something, but I can't substantiate it, but I'm going to hear it more and more. So the same thing is I believe. So somebody says, do you believe in God? Do you believe in this? Do you believe in that? What they're saying is, are you still holding on to that program condition and belief system at this point in time? Because I'm starting to get a little, we're going to have to keep talking. We're going to have to keep meeting up and going through some, something to reinforce it. Because when you unplug somebody from it, and some of you have already, I mean, it could be everybody that's listening to it has already been questioning or has stepped out. You notice if you're not reinforcing the belief, it starts to lose its capacity, its power, its influence on you. You don't use it as much, and eventually not at all, as your reality creation foundation and base. It starts to disintegrate. It starts to dissolve. It starts to lose its capacity. Why? Because it's only a belief. It's not a knowing. When you're in a state of knowing, it doesn't matter what the world reflects. It does not matter what anybody says. It does not matter whatever group has been convincing you or trying to convince you, it's one way or another. You are rock solid. You're just discovering more of the depth of it. It doesn't shake you away from it. It doesn't. Because that is coming from a true, powerful, genuine state. And you can see it. Because if you stay true to that, as you're shifting into it, accessing knowing, your inner knowing, this is what this whole series is about, and anything I've been sharing for the last 35 years is really to trigger that knowing. And we're doing it to ourselves, we're doing it with once an, uh, one another, but we're accessing that knowing. We're accessing that rock, solid, pure source essence that we have come here to express, experience, and create rea realities within. Not to adopt the beliefs. The beliefs were adopted. We're unadopting it. We're dissolving it. And again, emotions, emotions rely on beliefs, rely on potentiality and so forth. When we're talking about the stimulated emotions, emotions are a natural part of our human experience. Absolutely. It's not outside of it. It is one of the highlights of the human experience. But an emotion was never ever designed to run you. 
And you can see it whenever you're triggered. If you're angry, it completely overrides any level of consciousness. The moment you trigger that, you're into this state and you get deep and you bring in and call in now playmates to support that and to really bring that together. And then emotions, especially if it's fear-based or anything of the nature, it actually limits our choices. It limits the way we choose to experience ourselves. It actually cuts us off in the sense of saying, this is my world, it's huge, but while those emotions are in run, it makes that world very small. Options, resources within yourselves are limited. Okay? So an emotion is a beautiful experience, but it's never to be there to be driving you. You can use it to accentuate your experience, but you're not a polarized accentuation. You're a holistic uh, stimulation or what you call accentuation, feeling the very natural component of emotions. Emotions really bring the body into the beautiful um, expression. So when you're experiencing joy, a non-polarized version of it, because a lot of times we confuse it with happiness and sadness type of thing, but in pure joy, it's pure ecstasy. And you don't even need to take the drug. It's pure ecstasy, and that allows your whole chemistry, your whole body, the energy that your body emanates, how you communicate, how you radiate, it shifts it. So emotions are also carried in passion, excitement, exuberance of wanting to really just be the very essence of yourself. So. The knowing is within, emotions are used as something that brings it up not to limit you in any way, shape or form. It's not there to limit you. We've used it that way, but we've used it for that. So the thing is, it's really paying attention to our beliefs. Somebody calls it the psychology of belief. Whatever you believe, you want to bring the knowing. In, and that is tapping more and more into you. The ego wants to keep you in belief and old beliefs. The thing is, if somebody says to you, I believe I'm going to get well, you go look at it and say, Okay, that's a good belief to have. I know I'm going to be well. How about I believe that things are going to get better? I know things are going better. The knowing is, I'm in charge. The knowing is, I'm not allowing any other version of that because I am now stepping into that knowing. In that knowing, I am source. In that knowing, I am creator. In that knowing, I now shape around that. It's not whimsical. It is not fragile. It's very different. Somebody says, do you believe this is true? Or do you know if that's true? You can say, I know from the very core of myself it to be true. And even if that changes it at some point, it was never untrue. It was true then. True for what I needed to experience now. Where the belief is, yeah, I don't know. I believe it's okay because I got a lot of evidence to prove it. So, belief requires evidential proof and constant uh, stimulation and reminder from all sources. Knowing doesn't need any of that. Every time you just tap into your source essence, the knowing comes up. Very different. So, I'm not going to elaborate anymore on the beliefs versus knowing. I think you have enough of a clear understanding of what it is playing up. Okay. So the next thing I wanted to, to play with is uh, uh, consent. Now, I know I covered it. I just want to go a little deeper with that. A lot of times we say, well, I don't consent, which is great. But the moment, okay, you accept that somebody has power over you and you say, okay, I'm going to follow the rule. You just consented. You don't know 
on the surface that I consented or not. You're consenting every time you say, I'll take it in, because then it has an access. So for example, people talk about the elites and the control structures and the governmental and all of this stuff that's going on and all the different levels that's playing out. And they say, well, I didn't consent to have that world. But the moment you adopt it, the moment you use it, the moment you give it power, you've given consent for it to play. Because the moment you say, I am not playing there, you're now removing any consent. You're not even allowing the consent in. So, if the news media says to you, oh my God, this is falling apart, whatever it is, and you adopt the idea, go, oh my God, I got to be afraid of this, or I need to take action, or whatever that is, in the, in the direction of what that story was, you now consented that story, whatever, um, I can't think of the word, but whatever they are saying at this point, the, to become part of your experience. So you've just consented. Giving permission. Permission, yes giving permission for them to have power over you, to navigate. You're bypassing your higher self. You're bypassing the knowing. You're going into belief. I got to believe. Or I got an emotional charge around that. Or whatever it is. So the thing is, a lot of times we do not realize that we're consenting, consenting, consenting to many, many, many different things that are playing out around us. Okay? So... The moment we think that, okay, I'm going to elect such and such and whatever, I'm consenting, uh, consenting to be able to say, okay, they will have dominance, control, and make rules over me. And any rule that, you, that comes along, we have to consent. The moment you say, I'm going to play against those rules, you've made a, consens a consenting. Uh, consenting, yes, you've consented. Okay, you've consented those rules to now shape your reality. The same thing we consent to the beliefs. So somebody says, well, I'm teaching you this, this, and that. And you say, okay, I adopt it without even checking within if it resonates for me. You've just consented. And then it has access over you. So, take even vaccines. If we have the idea that um, good, bad, right, wrong, whatever it is, that I, I have to have that to prevent myself. You just consented for them to, to provide it for you. And not only that, to keep reinforcing, because many of us are, are consenting. But if you're going to go truly, I don't consent, but you're not afraid of it, you're saying, I'm not consenting. I'm not allowing that into my physicality unless you can prove with absolute knowing that this has documented, proved over and over again, a uh, beneficial effect with next to no side effects or negative uh, consequences around it. Because now you're, taking, you're going in an empowered state. And you will know if you have to, con to participate in it or not when you're going through knowing because the, 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 they're saying, oh, you got to have this to protect yourself. You got to have this just to have freedom again, or whatever you call it, vaccine, whatever. What are they doing? They're making you believe, but you're really allowing yourself to believe. It doesn't matter. They, they're doing. They're only playing out what we are giving consent to. If everybody, if lots of people start saying we're not consenting, and you can't prove any anything to us, you are not resonating within ourselves. We're not consenting. Guess what? The impact. The, the rolling out or anything of that nature, it doesn't matter if it's 5G, if it's vaccine, if, with anything, every story. The old world that is 2D inverted, 3D inverted matrix, we have to consent to play the game. We have to say, okay, I'll play the game. You adopt it, that's consent. And that's okay. But you're realizing now in an empowered state, I don't need to because it doesn't serve me any longer. That's all you're doing. So that's negating all of that. For the most part, we're not realizing how much we consent to every day, every moment. So if your family turns around and says, oh, this is how we do things, or whatever it is, and you agree in it, you've just consented to allow them to instill, which is basically you've adopted, whatever that may have been. 
Go ahead. Okay, um, James is asking, the law of attraction is talked about uh, a lot in spiritual circles. Is this an example of a belief? It feels like an incredibly disempowering belief system to me. Run that by me again. The law of, tra of attraction uh -huh. is talked about a lot in spiritual circles. Right. Is this an example of a belief, the law of attraction? Correct. Um, it feels like an incredibly disempowering belief system to me. It is. It is, very much so. Um, I know I, I used to shake up some people, uh, James, <laughs> when I used to say uh, the laws of attraction is the laws of distraction. Okay? We put a lot of effort, and even the ones that are channeling are saying, okay, we're in the laws of attraction. It does not work in that way. Okay? Does similar frequency align with other frequency? That's true. But it's not about attracting anything. It's basically, for us, we create and bring into our reality, adopted or not, what we choose. So, a lot of people talk about, okay, we need, um, we need to visualize and see ourselves a certain way to attract that into our life. Well, the thing is, there was the whole idea of visualizing, all the idea of, you know, we need to attract certain things. Then it's, oh, we have to look at our beliefs. We have to look at our underlining programs because, yes, if the belief says you don't deserve something, definitely it's not going to be uh, coming out their part. That's what they were saying. And the other part is, yeah, you just got to believe. You got to believe. You got to envision it. You got to see it. But then there's a subconscious belief around that. And then, of course, you got the ego component coming into it. So here's the ego component that comes into place. What I've said is that we experience what we need to experience, how we need to experience with the highest alignment possible. So we are creators and co-creators. There's and, and one of the things I was saying years ago, and, and I still reinforce it because it's, it's important, it's not what you consciously think because that's all the thought stuff too. The conscious thing that you think, what is the stuff you believe, what is super consciously most beneficial for you each step of the way. Okay? You're not going to create, you're not going to engage, you're not going to go into any experience unless in some way it either shatters beliefs for you, it either reshapes you in a different way, or breaks patterns, or gives you a particular experience that would elevate yourself to the next level. So, when you're tuning into yourself, you're not worried about laws of attraction. Those are laws of alignments, if you want to call it that. But it's not about, you know, I'm going to attract what I feel. What you feel is usually a reflection of something that aligns with you, but you... The whole purpose, if something's coming into your life and you're not looking at what am I attracting, how am I actually feeling with myself because this actually resonates, is there to push either my buttons or to show me the opposite in one way so that I can actually create adjustments in my reality. For example, somebody says, well, I always attract the same person in my life, different physicality, with the same nature that may be abusive. For example, let's take an example. I feel that I create, you know, uh, I keep attracting abusers, okay? Why? The only reason that's coming into your life is because you have not shifted from whatever story, program, belief systems that feeds that, and they're just different individuals in different packages coming in to kind of bring that realization to you. Is it a misalignment? Is it a bad attraction? No, it's coming into your life to kind of nudge you, to show you, hey, wait a minute, you got this, this uh, belief system, you have these programs and ideas that you're not good enough or that people have to be abusive to you or that you and somehow you have no power in, in, in experiencing your life on your own terms. So it's really just that, because the moment you shift that, and I've done this with many people over the years, is that when we go in and look at the program, whatever it is, those individuals don't come in any longer because you created the shift that you wanted to create from a higher perspective. 
Okay, was it an attraction? No, it is an alignment. You called them, you invited them to come in because I didn't get it with the last two partners or three partners or five partners. You come in and each one is going to be much more accentuated. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, so we should call it the law of creation. Yes, that you have the freedom of creation, the freedom to navigate. Because a lot of times people get in, okay, I gotta be careful of my thoughts because I'm gonna attract some negative stuff. The only reason that you may be thinking negative and having negative situations come about is for you to show yourself, look, not the, the law of attraction part, it's you are projecting this negative thing and it's just reflecting back to you to kind of notice it. Okay, so that you actually make the adjustments. Now, we don't want to get caught up in the mirror thing either. And I know it pissed off a lot of people over the years too because, oh, everybody's a mirror. Because what happens, you can get easily, easily distracted with the idea there's a mirror. Oh, I'm seeing somebody being violent to me. Okay, that means I'm violent. I'm attracting a violent person to, remind, to show me that I'm violent. That happens in a small part of the experience. A small part. That means it could be zero most of the time. They're reflecting to you that you say they're coming in as a victimizer, as somebody uh, that is acting negative towards you. Then you have to pay attention to how do I feel when that's playing out? Is it really stimulating a certain ideal program or belief system that I need to look at? Because a lot of times we get caught up, and I, I know that some people are not going to agree with me, and that's okay. I'm just planting the seed. You guys do whatever because it resonates within you or not. You, you'll get to that point. Because a lot of people that have argued with me before, no, everybody's a mirror. Uh, in a way, yeah, if you look at it, it's a reflection of something without the same match, meaning that somebody's violent because I'm violent. That, that happens at times. It's a small portion. Most of the time, the violence is showing that you're in a disempowered state or that you are a victim or that in, fa in fact that you're not feeling that you have the capacity to, to shift that so that you can actually make the shift within yourself. That's all it's reflecting. It has nothing to do with it. And you have to understand, there are no victimizers. The only reason they come into our playground is because we want to shift our, our part of how we may have been feeling as a victim and say, okay, I realize that these individuals, whoever it is, and the world around me is just reflecting a version of me that is no longer necessary so I can make some adjustments in my beliefs, clear those beliefs out. We want to get rid of all beliefs. We want to go purely into knowing. So is it really the law of attraction? No, it's what we call alignment, harmonizing, to provide us whatever we need. Could be a, a direct reflection, meaning that it may match, violence against violence, or for the majority part, it's bringing up anything. So if somebody is acting a certain way and it's pushing your buttons, it's triggering an emotion, it's triggering a story, it doesn't mean that you are that story. It does not mean that they are a reflection of you because you have that. Because a lot of people go looking for stuff within themselves. And I remember when I heard this years ago, a decade or so ago, uh, maybe close to even two decades ago, I'm going, no, 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 this will take you on a path that is going to, it's just, it's not even a scenic route, it's so many detours, because now you're looking for, because I used to hear from people, oh, well, you, you, you know, you have some violent people around you, you got to look in yourself, because there's a violent part in you. I'm going, well, that would be valid if I can see it. I'm going to look, okay? Couldn't find anything. However, whenever somebody was violent, it came up the story, oh, that I have to please people, or that in some way uh, I feel that I can't have say in the matter, or whatever it is. To look at it, like, I came, part of my family was violent, okay? And growing up, did I have a, a violent streak? It never came out of me, ever, because it never even came up as something I was suppressing at any point in time. It was very reflective of saying, we need to really take charge of our journey. It doesn't matter what my outside world is, uh, is transmitting back to me. 
I'm still staying grounded within myself and I'm creating a new template, a new way of playing the game so that I'm not getting caught up in addictions. I am not because I'm saying that I'm seeing around me things that don't match so that I can be more adhered to what matches within myself because it's a true reflection. Okay, I have a couple questions about uh, consent. So I'm just okay. going to ask them both. Yep. Um, the first one is, so instead of stating I do not consent, we are better to say I choose not to play in that reality. And the other one is, um, so if I'm not interested in playing the vaccine game, uh, I won't even... I won't, even if the collective goes this direction. And to clarify, are our souls uh, uh, done with the old game and the only reason it's playing out around me is because I'm consenting somehow? So do you understand what... Yeah, yeah. It, you know, the thing is, um, the consenting part we have to understand is that, you know, the only reason that you are experiencing certain parts of it, the soul itself has the man, main, main mandate to bring you to the most clearest state where you're no longer running on beliefs, programs, adopted ideas, and I won't write all of that, ideas, adopted or otherwise. It's basically saying I, the soul wants the most genuine part of you to emerge. So whatever's necessary that restricts you from being the most powerful state of who you are, we are going to play it out so we can clear out the programs, we can let go of the ideas, we can let go of all adopted beliefs and ideas uh, that we've uh, taken on and all, all the influence that the ego has. So if you're going to have any polarized part that is being allowed into you, is because your soul is assisting you to clear it out. Your human entity is doing the same. The physicality is doing the same. Because if something is dissonant, something is not balanced, it's going to allow you to facilitate. So back to the soul. The soul only wants you to be the grandest expression that you came here to be, no longer to play in the game. So that brings up the thing is, in those programs, what consent am I given or giving for people to play with me or to have influence on me? You're not looking at the consent so much as what program is coming up and then you say, oh, I've given consent to that. I've adopted it. I've utilized it, whatever it is. So that's all. You want to get to the pure state of state of consciousness that you are. And any part of the games that you're taking on was also the opportunity for us to be able to move through things. And that's why I keep saying, you know, we're going to have only the experiences that serve us. It doesn't matter what protocol, pro, uh, protection, or anything that you're going to do, or precaution, or anything of that nature. I'm not saying that you don't take certain steps. You're basically going to say, okay, does this resonate for me or not? If I'm going to go play in the game and they expect me to wear a mask, do I support it? No. But if, it, if it's everything around you is, is panicking around that, you can say, okay, I'll put it on just so that it doesn't stir up anything while people are going through whatever. But you're not giving power to it. Oh my God, I got to have the, this or else, uh, you know, I'm going to be wh wh one thing or another. Um, so in, the, in that regard, so you're going to look at it and say, okay, what am I adopting? What am I still giving power to? in the sense of what the media may be saying, what the so-called professionals, by the way, professionals are self-proclaimed -pro -pro and a lot of professionals are basically, um, you know, supported amongst each other. So a lot of the different things that are going on, in which I'm going to talk about shortly, depending on how much time we've got, uh, or else it will be in the next episode, but in, in that we have to understand that, that that game is there for you to really... Uh, get to that true knowing uh, within yourself. So with that in mind, have I given consent to this idea, concept, belief system, and so forth? And then how do I take it back? Well, you don't, it's not about taking it back. It's just, I'm not putting any more attention to that. And then the consent uh, dissolves, basically. I'm not buying into the idea anymore. I'm not adopting it anymore. Or I'm going to unadopt it. And that's already starts to shift. What was the first part of the first question? 
words. It was about um, do I instead of stating I do not consent, are we better to say I choose not to play in that reality? Yes, absolutely. It's even much more powerful, of course, by saying that I just don't play there. I'm not even going there. You know, if there's a legal system of some sort that's um, projecting it, and you you need to use those words, you use it. Okay, I'm not consenting. But most cases. What you're saying, I'm not playing there. Because the moment you make that clear statement that I'm not playing there, I'm not putting my focus there, then you're not going to have those individuals trying to force you to do anything because you've already made a statement. I'm not playing there. I'm done with that. And you're not done because you're afraid of it. You're done because it's not your game. You become invisible again. Invisible to the forces or whatever you want to call it that is still playing out for others to play. You're not going into that realm. Go ahead. I was going to say you could add an extra um, thing of adding, sending love to that situation or whatever uh, yes. for the people playing the game um, so that they come out of it themselves. Yes, yes, exactly. So even with that, a good point, you acknowledge that the game is being played around you. You acknowledge it. You thank the game for what it is because it's providing service, provided service to you and it's provided service to other aspects of you which are other playmates. And then just blast it with love. I love you for whatever you're doing, but you don't have to play it that way any longer. This is the thing. Uh, when you love the playground, you love the situation from a deep, pure, what we call ultimate, purest form of love, it has no consistency to stay intact. Because beliefs that are not true core knowing programs, ideas, or even any control structure dissolves because it, it, it requires polarity. This is why there's everything that you see is projecting polarity. It's projecting right, wrong, good, bad, fears, emotions, and, and so forth. Look at it this way. If you hear something on the media and you react from fear, or you act, oh my God, what's happening? You're basically in belief, ego's taking a run for it, you're in this lower uh, frequency, in a disempowered state, and you're, you now unplugged yourself from that higher knowing. So that means you have a program that's still active. You can watch the media and, and it turns around, oh, there's 10,000 people that just dropped dead yesterday, right? Oh, cool. Everybody had their experience, whatever it is. You're not even going to say that. You're just, you're not stirred by it because you're in that core knowing that everybody and everything will play out the way it needs to play out. Nobody's going to check out unless they've agreed to check out. It doesn't matter because we have the opportunity to check out all we want. But look at the, the I'll go back to that in a second. Look at all of that. We have many, many, many. We have accidents. We have uh, suicidal, we have, uh, what do you call it, illnesses and so forth. We have what they call old age, and we can shut down at any point in time. That opportunity is always there. It's always been there. And the only reason we check out is because we're done. If we're going to have an accentuated, polarized experience, we're doing it because it's still serving us in one way so that we can shift out of it. This is the thing. It's not the measures that you take, okay? You can have three parachutes are strapped to you and you jump out of an airplane you say well I got three backups but that's the way you want to check out guess what they can get all entangled and you end up on the ground dead or you can have one with holes in it and jump off and somehow you're still gonna end up landing and be okay I'm just saying I'm not saying not to to look at things and say okay I'm gonna make sure certain measures are in place but the point is we are fully in charge of it the ego says no the ego says oh my god we got to be do doing this 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 and this because we can die we can end up whatever right or we can get harmed or anything of that nature so the the, the thing is to pay attention to whatever triggers any emotions of polarization fear or whatever it is it's definitely backed up by a program. You want to clear the, that program part of it out so that you become much more neutral. And neutrality is not 
and I, I know I've talked about neutrality in the past, neutrality is not something that, oh, you know, I don't have life. Neutrality opens you up in a big way because now you're not limiting yourself with fears, rights and wrongs, good and bad, who I can play with, who I can't play with. Now, of course, you're not going to resonate with everybody because it depends on what frequency they're at, at what, um, what roles they're playing. So you're going to have certain family dynamics, friends, whatever, that doesn't resonate with you because they're not on the same page or same field of play. You're not going to engage. They either leave you or you leave them or you just keep a distance. And when I say distance, it's not like, oh, I don't want to talk to them. You, you, either one's not going to feel like talking to each other. Maybe you're, you're going to have family that you only see once in a while because there's nothing really that is supportive for each other because you're both on a different uh, space. Go ahead. I just wanted to maybe clarify, it's not about stifling the emotions that might come up and saying they don't matter or they don't count, because people are, are going to have emotional responses to certain things that are coming up right now. And so it's about acknowledging that they're there, clearing the thing that's attached to it. And it could just be grief, like there is a lot of sad stuff coming up. So um, it's not that that's not normal and we need to be neutral completely, yeah. right? It's about acknowledging the grief and acknowledging whatever's coming up mm -hmm. and and getting to a space of uh, understanding why it's playing out a certain way and all the parties that are playing in the game. Yeah, exactly. So emotions, uh, as they come up, a lot of times our body's purging out these emotions. Our, our operating system is purging out these emotions. So it's not a denial uh, of emotions. It's allowing ourselves to be present with the emotion and really truly experience it. A lot of people say, well, you know, I got to either uh, express my emotions or I have to repress my emotions. It's not about either one. It's basically being present with the emotion. You're not expressing it. You're not internalizing it or uh, repressing it, repressing it. You're basically allowing yourself to, to. So you can now, the emotions will come through you. It will be part of the purging, but it also will uncover stories, programs, belief systems that are ready and ripe to be kind of uh, acknowledged appreciated, loved, and released, or let go of, or just dropping it all together. So that's what all of that is about. So it's not about uh, repressing any part of it. Okay. Uh, you had a question before I question. carry on? There's one more uh, yep. question. Um, Valerie is asking, what is the highest frequency I can hold when it, when it does trigger me that my grandchildren are still getting the vaccines based on my daughter's beliefs? Okay, your highest frequency is love. The highest frequency for, is to love their journey. Because look, your grandkids, or anybody at this point in time, and I know I've talked about it in a previous episode, but I'm going to bring it up now because this is really, really instrumental and important. Each and every person, doesn't matter what age, from the moment they're conceived to the moment they're born till this moment, doesn't matter what age they're at, could be only days, could be weeks, months, years, whatever. They are collectively within themselves in charge. Every individual. So if a parent could be your child is has children and still believes in say the vaccines or whatever it is you could share whatever you need to share you give them resource resources but if they still have the fear around that the child can communicate with mom very powerfully not even even in words we're talking about telepathic communication energetic communication say i don't i don't uh, consent you without saying it I'm not consenting to have this go. And then there will be scenarios and situations that will play out so that they're not exposed to it. However, if they do consent, those are just codes that are going into the body. Those are just instructions that go into the body. But the individual child has the opportunity to turn it on and turn it off. It's not outside of them. We all have had various exposures. We have tons of exposure every day in our food, in our water, in our air, um, everything that we're exposed to, uh, but we are the ones that turn on, turn off any part of the experience. 
So you can be exposed to viruses, you can be exposed to it. You're only going to turn it on and utilize it if it serves you in one way or another. So love would be the best uh, uh, frequency of that. But if you're feeling less than that love part, what I would suggest then is you can just close your eyes and bring your soul in. You say, okay, I call in my soul. I fully embody my soul. And you ask your soul, say, soul, activate my home frequency. And what that does is it brings the soul's highest frequency into your experience. It also brings the consciousness that comes with that highest experience. Then you can say to yourself, I now activate the highest source essence that my body can contain which now all of this your soul frequency home frequency and your body's source home frequency which usually is the highest frequency that Gaia pro provides through the body um, and and sourceness that's everywhere you're basically aligning mind body human entity soul and then at that point you can now e more easily acknowledge that you are feeling disempowered or feeling that I have no say in the matter for my grandchildren or whatever the, the, the scenario may be. Um, and even the fear for whatever plays out, you acknowledge it. You acknowledge what your stories may be around that. And not only acknowledge, thank it for it playing out for you and for them having whatever experience they have. And then just blast it with love. You can blast your daughter, you can blast your grandchildren with love, but you first and foremost blast your story, program, belief system that comes with it. So that you dissolve that idea of feeling that it's your responsibility to shape your grandchildren's lives or the fact that you have an understanding and your daughter may not have an understanding or some individual in your life may not have an understanding. Um, and this is the thing. I see it all the time in our family dynamic. I don't see it directly with my kids because my kids were brought up in such a way where they have that deeper understanding, so my grandkids do, are not uh, vaccinated or anything of that nature. However, um, I see it in many, many other families within our family dynamics, being cousins, being you know uh, nephews and nieces and whatever else, and all of these that are really hardcore in that, and that's fine. I'm not there to feel bad for them you know, and the be best thing I can do, and what I do at times, is I transmit through just an intention, or when you call to, to the individual, and say, remember, you have freedom. Freedom to turn on and off, whatever. So you can say to your grandchildren, right? You could say it verbally if you want, but you could say it in a, in a meditative state. You can envision each one or both at the same time, or whoever, how many they are. And... Um, and just say, listen, you have the freedom to turn on and off, and also you have the freedom to uh, stimulate your mom to do it or not to do it. Because once the kids are saying they're not willing to do it, then mom's going to get the idea, because all of a sudden it's like, maybe I should research this. Or that they're going to find some other news where children that have been extremely vaccinated have had negative results or negative experiences or have you know created some intense experiences. And then all of a sudden it becomes part of her consciousness, your daughter's consciousness, and then uh, shift from that. So at this point, love the experience is your most powerful state. Is there anything else? No? Okay. I don't, I'm not even getting close to, to, to those things. Okay. So the next three things I'm going to cover... What's that? I am paying attention to time. Can't miss it. <laughs> We're already uh, 25, well, an hour and 25 minutes. Okay. All right. I keep going and going and going. All right. So let's cover a couple of things. So I think we have a good good idea of that. The, the next ones uh, will are already built up. We've already covered a lot of it in everything else. So just going in there. This whole idea of disclosure that comes up and... Um, and we can elaborate, some, uh, elaborate, elaborate next time around uh, to, to, to look at it. What is this disclosure about? 
the whole idea of this, we've been talking about disclosures and so forth. What does it pr provide us? What does it do for us? Well, disclosure is basically showing us behind the curtain. Okay? And I know the, the Wizard of Oz and all of that stuff where, you know, I won't even go there because I've talked about it in the last, um, I think it was the last one or the one before that. But anyway, um, part. So what does disclosure do? If we have a certain concentrated belief idea that this is the way of life and that others have power us, this, you know, we have a belief and a program that supports that. That the almighty is governmental. Almighty is the educational system. Almighty is the medical system. The almighty is the banking system. The almighty is all of these structures, ideas, concepts, and belief systems. And they all have power over us. If we have that, and then we think we have the belief that their intent is for our highest good, which it is, but in an interesting way, that is to wake us up or give us the opportunity of extreme polarities. But the disclosure just shows us to shake up our beliefs and start to dissolve them. If we believe that the almighty medical system, I'm just using one example, is whatever they say is 150% absolutely accurate and that there's nothing outside of that and that everything else is uh, what they call fake news or fake information or anything of that nature, well, when the disclosure is coming through, and it's been happening for a while now, but it's becoming more and more, they're showing that Look, there's no foundational proof, and it is now dictated by specific individuals to convince us that it's a certain way. Why would alternative, or what we can call holistic, support mechanisms to how of us shift certain experiences in our physicality are completely pushed out, in fact, to the point where it's showing you very powerfully that we're going to do everything to stop them. And any uh, idea that is true of how things really work is fake news. And everything that is not true, okay, is true or projected is true. What is the inverted matrix? Inverted 3D, 2D. Mainly 2D doesn't get too involved, it just follows the rules. But the inverted matrix. Why do we call it inverted matrix? I've been saying inverted matrix for a long time. Some people are starting to adopt it now because I, I see other people putting it in. Because everybody said, oh, we've got to get it out of the matrix. Well, there's two types of matrix. We have the organic natural matrix, the original design matrix, which keeps upgrading, and then we have the inverted matrix. Why do we call it inverted matrix? Because everything is backwards. Anything that actually benefits humanity from a harmonious state is made to look like it's fake, it's propaganda, or anything of that nature. Anything that actually compromises our, our, our state of, of, of uh, experience is made to be uh, made real or projected as real. Same thing with science. It's changing. But the science was, and I remember even growing as a kid, looking at some of the science facts and information, you know, parts of illusion, parts of, you know, how things worked. And that's the way it is. In fact, there was other discoveries, and many people have been involved with other discoveries to be able to say, okay, that does not hold water. It does not create any true value. Every discovery is pushed out of the way and made as fake, and then everything that was through a certain agenda was made real. That's all part of the inverted matrix. So, not only educational systems, scientific systems, uh, governmental, everything works in, in backwards too. Do you really understand what a government's real job is? They're a representative of us to make sure there's harmo harmony, balance, equality, and a freedom 
to express and experience without any limitations. And it's a representative of the collective, not of individualized pockets of consciousness or so-called rulers. Meanwhile, they're correct and everybody else isn't, right? So you see that with everything else. Look at the, the backward world. Oh, we want peace. We want peace. How do we do peace? Have wars. Destroy the idea of there's enemies. Did you ever ask yourself who made up that story that A is an enemy and B is the savior? That's pretty interesting. So when you're looking at it, it's the inverted matrix part that's playing out. So what we're doing, the disclosure is to show us really what's happening behind the curtain so that it shatters the things that we made that's created within the inverted matrix as absolute undeniable truth that cannot be questioned. It shatters this starts to bring that up. Now, of course, the ego says, okay, you've been lied to. They are the enemies. All of the ones that were adhered to that. All the ones that we disclosed. They're the enemy. And now we got to get angry. Guess what? Doesn't matter how you get there, as long as you're angry, you're disempowered. As long as you're angry, you're a victim. And that's not for us to do. So the disclosure is showing us the restrictions that have been in place. The game that does not match. And we're saying, okay, I see how it is. All that I trust, faith, and power I've given to those dictators or those ones that are role players playing that, I'm now seeing behind the curtain. I'm seeing what really is there. And now I now go into a, an empowered state and say, okay, now we're going to come together, unite, not in anger or whatever, to really create a change. So all of a sudden, it's not, the limits drop because most of the stuff we're disclosing is not only shattering what we have you know, adhere to as the ultimate truth, the ultimate way of life, but it's also accentuating for us the opportunity for us to see beyond that and see that there, these rules have created limits. Imagine this, you go to a school and that you cannot use your imagination, you cannot use your creativity, you can't even use your skill set. You go to education, you're now drilled with what to believe, what is, which most of it is all inverted matrix, and not to question any part of it. So basically you're memorizing. It does resonate or doesn't resonate, doesn't matter. You, you are here to be trained to stay in that world, that inverted world, in that inverted 3D aspect of it. Because true education is working with children or adults to bring out the skill set. For higher plateaus. True education is not stagnant. It's not boxed. That's all there is. It's like new discoveries, new ways of looking, new ways of playing, new ways of really accessing more of what we have capable in our playground. And all of that is all part and parcel of it. Are we still good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so the disclosure is showing, yeah, the educational system, the medical system, the governmental systems, all the different other systems that are in place there, monetary, you name it, okay, has had various playmates or role players that have created such restrictions to now see it so that the power we've given within it, we now can pull it out so that we can create. Because we didn't come here to play a small life. Are we good? Yeah, you're just exaggerating. Okay. 
We didn't come here to just play a small life. We came here to play an expanded life. We didn't come here to repeat what our ancestors have repeated, just with a little bit more modern touches. We're not here to repeat any stories and ideas that we brought. We're here to bring things up. Ev true evolution is true discovery, reaching higher and higher levels of awareness and creativity and imagination to upgrade not only the human experience, but upgrading all of the playground. True evolution is not looking at, this is the box, and we keep the box in place. And we play only in the box. If you feel that way, that's okay. You can play in the box as long as you wish. But you always have the freedom to step out of the box at any point in time. And that's the realization. So all of this disclosure is just showing us to how it works behind the scenes to allow us to become more empowered. Okay? And it's not about blaming and saying, well, you know, particular individuals, here's a bunch of individuals and these guys have been playing these negative roles. Yes, they've been accentuating polarization. Yes, you may have felt, felt, uh, felt like a victim because of these individuals and uh, what they've continued to project. But that's just an ego idea. That's a program. So in a sense, what you're looking at is like, oh, okay, they're playing out those. Now, do I still consent? Do I still agree for them to stay in power? Because look, just give me an example. Here's a small group that's dictating how life works, what you have access to, what we do and don't do, what technologies we use or don't use, what, uh, what, who can have and who can't. But they can only share that. It's up to us collectively to consent, agree to play the game of the rules that they're saying. They're saying this is the way the game is. If we buy into it, which we all have for the longest time, thousands of years, 10,000 years to be accurate, that they have the same we don't, because we didn't come from the right bloodline, we didn't come from with the right connections or anything like that. They're going to say whatever they're going to say, but it's us collectively, collectively, that decides do we support it, do we utilize it, or not. It's really up to us. This is the realization, so this is the disclosure about, because you're not the victim. You know, like I said, I showed it the other day. This is a small group that's telling us how to live life. These are all levels of us. The only reason this stays up is because we've, we've consented, we've agreed to play. But right now, what's happening is your, the rules that have been dictated are being shattered. And they're being stimulated because you are seeing that I'm the only one, or all of us, are the only ones can hold this up. The moment you say, you know, we're not consenting, we're not approving, we're not supporting, guess what? All of this changes because we decide we're not going to support it. We're not going to be, and not because you're seeing it that it's wrong, you're saying, Thank you for the game. But the game's done. It's done. Because we're done. Guess what? It all changes. Completely. We're not bound. This is the, the interesting part. We have the illusion that we're bound, but we're not. Okay? So the next part, really quickly. It all ties into the same. So it's just showing us the opportunity to see the back end and to see how it came about so that we realize that it was always made up and it was also some key instrumental that is just playing in the inverted matrix 3D and we're uh, inverted 3D and 2D and that we are now moving forward. Like you, you talk about the Q people, okay? What is that? What are they doing? 
They're assisting us to see certain part. Are they the saviors? Absolutely not. Are we going to say, okay, we'll wait for them to get things sorted out, get rid of all these vile people and all these, you know, uh, tremendous? They're playing a role. They're re- they may and are removing certain or bringing to light so that we collectively agree to remove certain uh, role players or retire them in one way or another. But that's not the answer. They are doing their part. We have to do our part. Okay? They're assisting some of the control players that, you know, uh, that we are still under spell sort of thing. And when I say spell, I'm talking about under the illusion that, you know, we have no power. It's saying, okay, you feel that you have no power? We're going to expose you some of these. And we're also going to remove some of these players. And then you're going to see, oh, oh, okay. Now we have more breathing room. Well, the breathing room is really the us making the breathing room. Really, that's all it is. So when we look at all of this, we're all role players in the whole dance. So if we're going to make Q the savior, that doesn't work. If you're making the, uh, the, the elites of control part of the top part of this thing as the vile, the, the nasties or anything of that nature, that doesn't work. You have to see it for what it is. They played a role. We've consented. We have agreed. We made no mistakes. We decided to taste it out, test it out. We've created the environment right now to us to unplug from all of that. And that's what we're doing and nothing more. So it's not about the Savior and it's not about us fighting. It's about coming to a realization and we now say we are choosing to be empowered And this is why the whole theme has been going on around empowerment and seeing that it's not what we've been led to believe so that we remind ourselves who we are from within. Did you have something you want to say? Um, Yeah, someone is asking. They've asked this question a couple times now and I haven't um, addressed it it because it hasn't been quite on topic. But I'll just... Maybe you can answer it quickly. Okay. Um, is it true that the angelic realm disbanded on April 4th uh, because we are to be sovereign? Because this person is finding uh, that information confusing. Okay. Well, here or there with all of that stuff. The angelic realm that we call it, which are other souls. What is an angelic realm? The angelic realms, there are souls. There are other aspects of ourselves that do not choose to take on physical form in on physical so-called planets. Even though none of it is physical, they just don't take it on. Now, that doesn't mean that's exclusive. No, that's not the way it works. Because there are angelic beings that have very core nature of the angelic aspect of it that do take on form. So, once upon a time... And I just wanted to throw that one in there. They played a much more powerful role in the sense of assisting us in whatever was playing out. So, you know, if you you heard all the time and saying, okay, I'm going to call my angelic realm to support me and to find me a parking space or to, to do this for me or to do that for me and whatever else, right? So what we created is a reliance and a dependency for them to do something that we were, you know, really capable of doing in a sense, but we were relying on that. And that shifted. That shifted... Some time ago, back in the end of 2012, going into 2013, now uh, they say, okay, we're not giving you the same support. We're not impeding you in any way so that you can use your own navigational system. We will be there to support you energetically and do some tweaking, but it's not to, to remove or, or override your own creation. It's to, to kind of remind you how the, and so forth. So, they played a very powerful role where they supported us. And the angelic realms created some, what you call, negating energies where there were such dark, uh, and when we say dark, um, very polarized, very lower vibrational frequency of, um, of humanity and all that was playing out, they worked with various individuals to bring not only information, but also to hold a certain energy so that we wouldn't go too too far deep into that lower, lower frequency. So they held a polarized, 
higher frequency to kind of bring us, uh, create a little bit of a balance, per se. That's the role that they've done. Now we've gotten to a point where they're saying, we're not going to hold that for you any longer. We're now allowing you to get whatever, because we are not going to drop this fires anymore, because we've already made a lot of progress, to, for you to turn on your own source essence more of. So it's the empowerment part. So I'm giving you more time, not more time, more opportunity by stepping back to become much more um, self-empowered. That does not mean that they're not still working through us. They're not propping us up as much. Before they were a helping hand until 20, the end of 2012 going into 2013. Then they were just kind of supporting and holding that, that other spectrum of light to create a little bit more of the polarity so that we would gravitate more to the higher frequency to get to closer to the neutral point. Now they're saying, we're not going to hold that anymore. We're allowing it very little, and we're going to support you to turn yourself on more. Basically, the self-empowered, bringing in the capacity of source essence within yourself so that you will have much more influence in becoming self-empowered without the reliance of us holding that, that spectrum of light for you. Now it's to turn on your own light. So it's like they were the flashlight. First they were kind of carrying you along with the flashlight. Then they stopped carrying you along and they were shining the flashlight. And now it's like I'm turning the flashlight right down and so that you have to illuminate. You have to bring in yourself into the empowered state. You need to dissolve the victim state. Go ahead. Is that, um, is that uh, true for a lot of guides, people's personal guides and stuff? Yes. A lot of the personal guides are not giving you full details any longer. Okay. And this, this happened uh, a little while ago, but it's much more noticed. So the thing is, the guidance is kind of a nudging of what you already know bring you some clarity, but it's not giving you instructions to the same degree. A lot of times you will get instructions, but that's just the nudge it, but sometimes those instructions are not from your guides. There might be other, other components coming in that is, uh, you know, trying to keep you in the sense of saying, oh, I'm going to create a reliance or anything of that nature. So the guides are not holding your hand as much. They're reminding you, and they may be nudging you a little bit, but at the same time, they, they also want you to be self-empowered. Go ahead. But you can still ask them for assistance. Yes. Yes, you can ask for assistance. You can ask for the angelic, assist, uh, uh, angelic and the guides for assistance. The only assistance they'll provide is something that you cannot access frequency-wise or consciousness-wise temporarily at that point in time but they will also work very closely for you to actually bring that part up within yourself. It's just giving you time to integrate all of this and to become much more empowered. So, um, trying to think of the word. It's not really just to disempower you. That's not the word I was thinking. I'm trying uh, to override, for example, anything that you're capable of. It's really more... Let me stimulate it so you can see what's capable with you and then pull out. So it's like this. Look, look, you can walk, you can walk. It's like somebody teaching their child how to ride a bike or to, to walk. The thing is, you're going to pick them up. You're going to hold their hands for a little while. And then every so often, you hold, let go of their hands so that they can create their own balance. And this is what your guides and your, your uh, angelic realm is doing now. And it's not like holding you along the way as they may have before. They will encourage you and things of that nature. But the thing is, where you get unplugged, where they step back, is when you become reliant to them. Reliance is disempowerment. Let me say that again. Reliance is disempowerment. I rely for them. They're going to say, I'm going to provide you only what you need, when you need it, how you need it, so that you are able to still navigate on your own capacities. We're not here to negate any part of your capacities. So this is the thing. A lot of people, what happens? When you rely on somebody, you don't learn your own, well, you don't gain your own access, you don't gain your own 
uh, capacities because now you're relying on somebody to support you, somebody to care. And a lot of people have relied on angelic realms, have relied on their guides. They don't want reliance anymore. None of that. It is, I'm going to give you as little as possible to get you back up, but that's it. I don't want you to rely on me to carry you. I don't want to rely on you to, to keep nudging you all the time. I'm going to nudge you, but you're, you're going to create your own experience because you're very powerful. They're, they're not any better than you are. They may not be in non, they may be in non-form, so they get to see a bigger view of things and kind of show you that there are certain things in there. But a lot of people are, are um, still have put a lot of reliance on that. And it's really, so even this information that's being shared is really just to trigger you so that you're really self-empowered in that. You were going to say something? Oh, I was just going to say that um, I think, too, we can just tap into those guides and the angelic realms are still sending a, mm -hmm. uh, unconditional love, and it's about tapping into that for ourselves. Yes. So they're sharing it so that you get a taste of what that is so that you can actually stimulate what's in you. Okay? So it's not outside of you. So you can really, really experience that part of it within yourself. All right, I think we've gone far enough. I mean, there's more topics I would I'd like to cover, but we're going to do it in the next episode, which will be next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, and it may show up at different times for different people. I know I did have an inquiry from somebody who says, oh, how come it's showing up on my uh, phone or my uh, computer at a different time? Well, you have to understand that your computer, your phones, they actually look at whatever time zone that you're in, Sometimes we may have the time zones uh, incorrectly set within our phones or computer or that we have not uh, activated uh, daylight savings time. Now, some of them are automatic because I found that some people even living in locally in our area, they were show, uh, displaying uh, uh, 3 p.m. for them and uh, when it was 4 p.m. And uh, so... Uh, that is, you need to look at the time zone that you're set in. Could be set, it could have got moved, or the fact that uh, the daylight savings time, because we did spring forward. So 3 p.m. of the old time in non springing forward was 3 p.m., but it's 4 p.m. now because it's spring, sprung forward. So it's just a matter of that. So just double check. Eastern time, uh, that's where it shows up. But if it shows up on, on the phone differently, depending on the zone that you're in, just check your settings setting in your phone, setting on your computer, and so forth. And, I, and I've seen that happen before, um, and somebody else was uh, presenting that. Is there anything else we needed to address? Okay, so this is the last part. Part 5. The next one will be episode 18. And even though they're in the different parts, but we're not going to keep going parts. So we're going to bring in. So the next ones, we're going to take a look at some more uh, around the fear. I'm just going to check what else I got in here. Uh, the whole idea of hope. Um, yeah, the, the energies that we focus on that, the importance of thoughts and focus, the role it plays, how it shifted, true understanding of the importance of thoughts and feelings and so forth, how to empower ourselves, which we will uh, attempt by going through all those layers to get to do a process together uh, on that. So stay tuned for the next one. Please... Um, if you feel in resonance, support us uh, on our journey here. Um, uh, please check out also the different, um, different uh, what do you call it, different so uh, programs that we have, uh, our workshops and so forth you know, on the Teachable. Everything is in the link of description. Um, we also uh, we have a group. Uh, it's a support group in a sense where like-minded people come together. A lot of times people would like the support, which is let's talk about you. That's also available. And I was going to say something else, and I can't recall what that was right at the moment. Uh, Meditation? No, we're, gonna, we're planning to do a semi-global meditation. Um, we'll, we'll notify you of uh, that. There was something else that was uh, important. But anyways, it's okay. So if you, if you like it, please, uh, where, whatever platform, push like. If you're on a platform like YouTube and so forth and you feel like getting more notifications of this, you can just push uh, the button subscribe. And then there's usually a bell that shows up. That's the notification so that you will get notification when the next uh, workshop is. Uh, sorry, ne next 
um, episode of our series uh, comes up. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention too is that uh, feel free to, to share comments or anything about nature because the more we share it, but share, 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 share with others because the more people that uh, are getting this information, uh, it's not for me to get popular, it's just feeling that more people get this information will start making changes uh, collectively a lot more effectively. So just share as, as far and wide as possible. This is why it's at no cost. Yes, we do say, well, we do appreciate any support that we do get financially and otherwise because we'd like to continue putting out more and more of this content. Uh, so anyways, till next Tuesday, have a blast.